Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for tuning in to Supercars Today TV, where we report all of the news on the Supercars Today series, which it really isn't called anymore. It's called the Arkham Menard series. But um, we look back into the as far back as we can get. Not to make you sound old, Mr. Jensen, but our <laughs> guest today is Dave Jensen, and we're at part two of our interview with the Missouri, well, I don't know, are you a Nevada native, Idaho native? What would you call I'm yourself? Everybody, everywhere. Everywhere, yeah. <laughs> I did all the racing stock cars out of when I was living in Missouri. Missouri. And uh, a lot of folks will remember Dave. We're going to, uh, the this section of the show we call uh, show and tell, but Bobby Bowser kind of coined the phrase show and maybe don't tell, but <laughs> I guess that's up to Dave. And uh, uh, if you folks wouldn't mind to like and share our, uh, our channel, our interview with Dave, and uh, subscribe, hit that subscribe button and hit the notification button so that the bell will ring. And um, we're going to go to our first image here. Well, our first image is of me, your host, Kevin Schwarzy. And uh, people always tell me I forget that. And, uh, you know, <laughs> I guess you need to know that. And I don't need to be on the screen anymore except for that one picture from Talladega 1994. But uh, uh, this is our guest, Dave Jensen. And that pretty blue an orange car that uh, I always loved. This is this car is from Texas, uh, September 1992, and uh, you know I had to save film because uh, I really enjoyed uh, <laughs> I really enjoyed uh, that car. And uh, here's our first image, and that's from uh, 1982 at IRP. Correct. And uh, is that a you know, I, I'm glad I know where the hood is. Is it a how car? That's, what is that? that was Maybe talk about that car a little bit. <laughs> Other than one year, I always ran how cars. Okay. Yes. And uh, how did you enjoy IRP? How would you enjoy uh, the uh, the how cars? What was it about a how car that uh, you always stayed, you know, or, or, or about this they how were, car? What they sold, like whatever Mike Eddie could have, uh, you could purchase also. They didn't have a two two sets like the house car and your stuff that they sell you. They're just good people to work with. I still work with them all the years. Been with doing business with them for almost forty years now. Wow. Our next shot here, and most people don't have their own die cast. <laughs> but I don't know. Is this your die cast or is this Tim Richmond's die cast? <laughs> that was my car. Tim Richmond leased the car, or his marketing people did. Uh, and for Nashville, All American 400 in 1985, and uh, he was very good. We went down there, um, practiced and qualified, and did all that. And in fact, he had uh, there's quite a few cars at, at Nashville always. And we started the, the race, and later later on, he's a great guy. And of course, all the all the followers around him had his entourage with him. But uh, the Tim Richmond we heard of. You know, party guy, whatever. Right. What's the Tim? Who's the Tim Richmond you knew? Regular, same type, but just a good guy. I mean, had the world in his hands, that's for sure. Um, but great guy, and uh, his his uh, PR people or PR group there, they were nice people. Everything was good. And uh, I know we had a flat tire there, about I don't know, 20 laps in. The, and if you pit at Nat, you're at Nashville, you got to pit on the green. You know, you pit on the quarter mile. You're going to lose a lap, and I had a good pit crew that weekend. I had some guys from Bob Strait's crew, and uh, Donnie Strait, and, that, and got him in and out, and uh, still lost a lap, but still run good there. And then later on, we broke a rotor, a distributor shaft in a rotor, and pulled in, uh, and it fell out. And he, but he says hey, he was he was he was impressed with the car and all that, and so it was a success weekend, other than a breakage in the motor, which we could not control. Now, if I'm not mistaken, Bob Strait also drove for you as well. Yes, sir. Yeah, Bob Bob Strait's a real good friend of mine. Um, when I, I since I didn't have a really a crew, I'd travel a lot of times by myself. We went to we went to a few Art Go races. Uh, I'd I'd crew it, you know, set it all up and everything, and he'd drive it because he's a heck of a driver. And we were just we'd get along like he always says, "Hey, if we do good, we'll have steak. If we don't do good, we'll have hamburger." <laughs> but we always he's a great friend of mine. But lucky to call him a friend for. 45 years cowboy bob and uh the first picture we saw was uh the photo credit went to keith kohler and this photo credit i'm not exactly sure i found it online 
but it uh, it is obviously a die cast, and that picture belongs to them, and it does not belong to me. But I will say this right here. This picture belongs to me. I was a 15-year-old kid here, 1983. Michigan. At Michigan for the first or second ASA race. I'm not sure the first year they ran it. No, we ran we ran. That'd be the second one because we ran one in '81 there because I had a Dillon car at the time. I'd enjoy. Uh, was that your first taste of super speedway racing there? I noticed the the back end is jacked up a little bit there uh, <laughs> to get it up that spoiler up. Uh, it no, looks that's like all the, you could. That's all you could run on spoiler. That's when they had rules like that. Now when we ran Atlanta in '81, and uh, they had like a 10 inch spoiler rule. Well. Or no, they had excuse me. They had a height rule off the off the ground. Well, I think I, I had a, I had about twelve inch, ten or twelve inch spoiler on that thing. Talk about downforce. You could you could almost flat footed around Atlanta with a, with a late model. At the time, you didn't think much up. You look back, especially when I went through there later on. You know, we were on aluminum wide five hubs, aluminum body straight rail frame. You know, race car. Uh, not. <laughs> Not as safe as you could be. Yeah, uh, yeah. Like we were talking about earlier, basically a late model on the super speedways. But is that what kind of what your appetite for the speedways there racing? Probably does. Kevin, here, sir. yes. Because the the uh, the next shot I have here is uh, your car from 1992 mm -hmm. at Texas, September 92. And I also hear that that was uh, quite a fast track. Yes, sir. That was a very nice track. Yes, that was a that's old Texas World Speedway at outside of Waco. In fact, it was the same weekend as they had the Waco problem. The government had the Waco problem because we went by. We were just talking about that the other night. And, uh, but yeah, that was a, that was, a, we, ran, we ran down to Texas a couple of times. How'd you enjoy that track? A lot of guys said it was super fast, super smooth. Very nice. Yes, very nice. It was a copy of Michigan, MIS. And um, it's too bad it's gone to the wayside now. But uh, that was a very good track. Yes, sir. Enjoyable. And the crowd and the fans loved it. I mean, they were very interactive. Yeah, here it's gone to uh, basically from the college. The uh, It's kind of headed, I believe the track was southeast of College Station. And I, so basically, yes, it, yes, sir. the subdivisions here. came yeah, toward probably, that's probably pretty close to the track. Know, urban, urban development. Urban development. <laughs> and now this is your. I believe your first start at Daytona in 1994, and yes, sir. you're number 80, and you're in a Pontiac. It's kind of a couple changes for you here. Okay. Now, that was, uh, I went to 80 because, well, Bob Strait, which I said earlier was a good friend of mine, he had some points, which also guaranteed show money. Well, I was, since I only ran a few races a year earlier, um, I wasn't on that show program. So with running, the, I could run him, his car owner, which that was just on paper, uh, with his, so I got show money plus the winners, plus a you know race purse. And how'd you enjoy your first Daytona experience? <laughs> Loved it. Loved it. Couldn't wait to go back. If folks would please like and share our channel here and hit that subscribe button as well as the bell to get your notifications when we have an interview with a driver like Dave Jensen here, uh, we'd appreciate it. And you'll find that at Supercars Today TV. Of course, you're there if you're watching now, but. Uh, Find those buttons, find those likes, and we'd appreciate it. And the next shot here is of you inside that race car at Talladega for your first Talladega start. All right, correct. Look, I'm wadded in. I got it was. I was <laughs> filled the compartment up pretty good. Yes, sir. Now, from what I understand, there's nothing like Talladega. No, that's right. Yeah, you know, the Daytona and Talladega are similar, but they're they're completely different. Uh, the way you come on, yeah, yes, yes, that was about it. I actually only got to race Talladega once, but it was it was a definitely uh, enjoyable and race enjoyed racing. Now you're in a Pontiac here when you're usually in a Chevy. Well, at that time, we got uh, that was an earlier car. We got with worked with uh, Pontiac people, got some uh, help with the body and so forth. Um, I can't remember the gentleman's name, but um, that worked out good for that. That's why we had that. Then later on, then when I in uh, at Day when I ran Daytona and Talladega, uh, well that's take we'll take we'll start over. That's <laughs> that was the car that I purchased from Sabco. That was correct. I was a mistake there, but yes, we had worked. That was the other car, other Pontiac we built in '88. We had sheet metal help from Pontiac Motor Company, but that was a Sabco car we had purchased right before 
right at the end of the year, 1993. Now, I don't know if you remember, at the time I used to sell photos also, as long as as well as doing my magazine that covered Just the Arca series, and uh, somebody came up to me that was running a Pontiac at the time and said, mm-hmm. uh, do me a favor, go over to the uh, Cup Garage. Uh, I want to buy some pictures of you. Get, a, get some shots of the Sabco Pontiac because... If uh, any Pontiacs all cheated up, it's probably theirs. <laughs> they, so. they took advantage. Yes, sir. Yes. Not many people own their own trading card. Oh. <laughs> Thank you, Marty Langenberger, for producing these <laughs> cards. Uh, I'm sure you remember Marty, the guy with the everybody says the guy with the ponytail, but right. uh, uh, out of Rockford. But uh, yep, you got your own uh, trading card here. Yeah, two years. Uh, two years, I believe, it was '92, '93. They made a, I've got them in my office where the uncut poster of all the cars together, which is I got it in a frame, not just little individual cards, but that's very neat. I thought it was a so I got some collection after 26 years. <laughs> now we're getting to the not so pleasant part of the interview. Um, this is your last Arca start. This would be Atlanta of 1994, November of 1994, and I believe. I I am the the only guy who's got a shot of you making your last lap yeah. at Atlanta, and this okay. is I don't know if this is your you said you maybe you can talk about it I don't need to talk about it. <laughs> well, okay. Well, Thursday we, we, we normally had Thursday all as practice, and we were going to race uh, Friday. Okay. Well, it rained all day Thursday, a lot of moisture and stuff, so we we need to be on the track, get some practice. First practice is like eight o'clock on Friday morning, and I had went out earlier and I was one of the first cars out and practice good and everything I come in and make an adjustment and change the spring and uh, that's the last thing I remember I went back out and about the third lap uh, either we hit some moisture on the track I don't think anything broke I think more like hit a moisture more we thought about it more like maybe a moisture on the track from the rain the day before and going into three and it uh, spun around 180 degrees, and driver's side went in the wall. And that was that was it. <laughs> that was the end of the deal. And this is uh, coming off the wall. This is a shot of that. You were telling me earlier. Now Wayne Dellinger is going by in the 03 there, and you had said you talked to Wayne later yes, about this. Yeah, because Wayne's here in town in in the Mooresville area, lives over by Lake Norman, and he was this is this is probably 10 or 15 years ago, but he uh, said when we were coming off the corner, the old where you come he says you went he said you went by me before i was even in corner two and you were already going into three he said you're really hooking it i said well we're going trying to go the best we could now don't mean to get morbid here but here's the ambulance and this is the right. last time basically on a racetrack and you were saying that graham taylor who was uh 1989 or 1990 rookie of the year in arca Probably, 88, yes, 89? Yeah, yeah, nice gentleman out of pennsylvania yeah he was a he was spot spotting. he was spotting for me and uh, have you talked to him later about this as well? Yeah, I've talked to him. He came down here. We, in fact, he came down here to Mooresville, going through on the way to Florida probably. But uh, I've talked to him a couple of times. And I haven't talked to him here in the last five or six years. But, uh, yeah, he's a very nice gentleman. He, like I say, he used to race, had the, the, the Ford T-Birds. I think they were Ford T- Thunderbirds he ran. And did he recall anything? Did he say you, you wiggled, bobble, just came around? No. or? Just, just, just snapped loose, you know, just took off like he hit something. And uh, and I do remember one thing. In fact, Howard, the gentleman that worked for me for 24 years, just retired here last you know, last year. He was there with me because he'd been a good friend of mine for 35 years. He said, whoop. He says, you, whoop. He says, here we go. I say, so that's the last thing I said. And then uh, the, rest, the rest is history, as they say. Well, but as a race car driver, you know, and, and all the years you've done it, you know, it's got to make you feel good that, okay, everybody says that it's snapped around, which doesn't tell me yeah. it's driver error. I don't think it's, I mean, I'm not saying it is, but it's something let go because, I mean, I've been there. I'd been in Atlanta. It wasn't the first time in Atlanta. I've been in, in fact, we ran ASA at Atlanta a number of times, and it's about the fourth time I've been there with ARCA car. So, but I, you know, and what we could tell from, what was left of the car when I got back to Kansas City it was I, we got it unloaded, and uh, couldn't tell of anything. The only thing that was broke on the car was a, one of the left rear U bolt. It hooks the truck arm to the rear end, but that could have been broke with when the left side hit the wall. Oh, I don't believe it broke in there, but it's, it was a snap loose. It wasn't a, a gradual you know, loose control. I don't think. 
Now, this is a page from uh, Supercars Today in April of 1995, and this is you and Mary at the right. track uh, at the, at, in April of 95 at Atlantic. I guess your triumphant return. <laughs> yeah. But uh, as you can see by the headline, you told me something that day that was definitely an eye, an eye popper. And um, I don't mean to sound weird, but some people say they see light, they see no. music, whatever. But you were gone when they got yeah, to you. Yeah, Donnie Strait, who has since passed away, great guy, Bob Strait's older brother, a Chicago boy. And uh, he called me. He says, man, I bet you saw a light at the end of the tunnel. And I said, no, didn't see no light. And then uh, here a number of years ago, probably five years ago, he had a heart problem. Or a, you know, I said, Donnie, I called him on the phone. And I said, Donnie, did you see the light? He says, no, but I was thinking about you because I know I asked you that 20-some <laughs> years ago. And no, no, didn't see no light at the tunnel or stars or anything else. <laughs> But do, do you, what do you remember from, I mean, you remember being on the track, and then what's the next thing you remember? I don't remember really. You know, memory would be from the night before. In fact, ironic, I talked to the ambulance drivers because they were sitting in the rain in the car. I said, well, I hope you guys aren't busy this weekend. I turned around, I was busy. They were busy with me. <laughs> You're the, the reason. Next day. Next day. <laughs> uh, but I don't really remember anything that till probably the week before or right after Thanksgiving when I pretty much woke up in the, in Georgia Baptist Hospital cuz I was in a coma there for about 3 weeks. Oh, 3 week coma and I Something know like and that, I believe yeah. they trached you also. Oh yeah, I got the got the old divot, the neck <laughs> divot. But, You've got uh, your battle scar. <laughs> yeah, that's right. But no great people, you know. And that was it, no more driving. No, I haven't. Uh, I've had opportunities, a couple opportunities come up, but I was I just bought this property here in Mooresville uh, the week before, in fact, cuz we came down here and got the motor you know, also paid, got the property, paid, you know, closed on the property. So uh, I was going to move down here and, you know, because I was racing, that was not going to be in Kansas City. Uh, but uh, it just didn't work out. And so I figured if, you know, if I took a ride, I would have gate up, ate up with it, and I'd, business probably wouldn't have progressed. Well, and, you know. I got to do it for 25 years. And cheated, quote unquote, cheated death. I, I mean, guess you don't want to yeah. try that again. Maybe yeah. <laughs> enough's enough. Maybe <laughs> I did that on a motorcycle a couple of times too. <laughs> oh oh, oh boy! <laughs> so you and Tim Steele could probably share stories. But uh, yeah, if you folks would please like and share our channel here with our interview with uh, Dave Jensen, we appreciate you being on the show, Dave. And um, I, when you and I spoke on the phone to come down and do this interview, which is where we're at today, I don't. I think I've been here before, but I don't recall. Maybe talk about the parts business a little bit. Okay. Well, we came down and, uh, like I say, my, my, I had a parts business in Kansas City for short, short tracks, late models, and modified and so forth. And then uh, I wasn't going to, I was going to, originally going to still race and have a parts store also. But after that little escapade in at Atlanta, um, it turned out to just do parts, and it's been very successful. Um, say Howard who retired down here just about a year ago he was with me he come down him and his wife and son they wanted to uh, move down here also and it all worked out and he, he's a great you know good friend of mine and uh, we started taking you know built the building and uh, parts business started up you know used parts and then the used parts deal is kind of dwindled apart but because uh, everything doesn't fit go to the ARCA, the ARCA team and the pro who's pro cup they don't have no more and the show car business that was a big business for us supplying the show cars hooters pro cup stuff like that uh but our new parts uh, we're doing fine doing it that good as we lead out of the show here uh part two and again mm -hmm. appreciate you being on the show and i'm your host kevin schwarzy how would you like to be remembered don't know i've met a lot of nice people hopefully i mean i i know that people always remember the car i guess that's probably how i'm remembered uh i wasn't a superstar or nothing but tried to run as best we could with what we had and always tried to make sure my stuff was clean and you know that didn't take you know a lot of time to do you know just just be, take pride in your what you did well folks we thank you for tuning in i'm your host kevin schwarzy please hit that like and share button and uh subscribe to our channel here at supercars today tv and dave jensen we appreciate you having us here i hey, appreciate it good seeing you